हरि ओम एवरीबॉडी वी विल स्टार्ट विद द मंगल श्लोक ओम गणना अंतवा गणपति गुम हवा महे कविंक वीणा मुपमश्रवस्तमम ज्येष्ठ राजम ब्रह्मणा ब्रह्मणस्पत आन शुण्वन्नूति बिस्सी दसादनम प्रणोदेवी सरस्वती वाजे भिर्वाजिनी वती धीनाम वित्यवत ओम गणेशाय नम ओम सरस्वत नम ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम ओम सहनावतु सह नौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकर वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मा विषा वह ओ शाति 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 ओ ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यालक्ष्यम विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गुरु तम नमा सद्गु तम नमा समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर यधिमात्रेण सर्वे शिष्या सेवका कर्म क्षेत्र प्रवर्तंते चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम सो ऑन दिस आस्पिशियस अकेशन ऑफ दीपावली आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट ऑफ wishing all of you a very happy and a bright deepavali i would like to thank dr asha for asking me to speak on this topic called darkness to light so let me share the presentation before we get into the vedantic meaning of this topic i would like to express my thanks to mr thomas alva edison a great american inventor he was the first to commercially develop an incandescent lamp which brought so much convenience to our lives often we use the symbol of light to represent a great idea you know i work in the area of program management and what we do is to use stoplight charts to represent the health of the project we call them gyr metric green if it is on time everything is on, uh, as per plan yellow if it is off plan 
and we have a mitigation plan to recover that. Red, if it is out of plan, like that. So we use terms like brilliant for somebody who has great intellectual ability. And when somebody is full of ideas, what do we call them? We call them a visionary. In the lighter sense, for a dim-witted person, we also call him or her a tube light. And when a person is realized, we say he is enlightened or put a halo around him. We put that person a halo around him. Even in PowerPoint presentations, we use a laser pointer to draw the attention of the viewer to that point. You know, I grew up in India. During my childhood, one of my observations was that during the evening hours after it got dark, when I flipped the switch to turn the light on, my mother would go pay respects to the light bulb. It was almost like a reflex behavior. I had asked my mother about it. She used to say, being a source of light, it would represent that reality, God. My mother always told me that she was reminded of Bhagwan's presence when there is light. It represented that awareness, that reality of God. So on this Deepavali occasion, Deepa simply means a row of light, Avali. But Deepavali is celebrated throughout the world in many forms. But the traditional celebration commemorates the return of Lord Rama, Sita Mata, and Lakshmanji back to Ayodhya after 14 years in the forest. Worship of goddess Lakshmi, Lord Kubera as the treasurer, as a part of the Danteras is also being celebrated. Lord Krishna vanquishing Narakasura, celebrated as Naraka Chaturdashi, Bali Padyami to celebrate the and honor Bali Chakravarti. But the most important thing to remember about Deepavali is that it is a festival of lights. It symbolizes one's own spiritual victory of light over darkness or ignorance. Good versus evil. As you all know, even our Chinmaya Mission logo is a lamp to symbolize knowledge. The Deepam there signifies knowledge. 
all our activities should be governed by the light of knowledge especially the knowledge of dharma by this knowledge ignorance or darkness can be dispelled we bow down to that knowledge which is the greater wealth in our lives knowledge also provides us with a greater moral fabric for all our good actions so the lamp which is kept lit for all auspicious occasions is a witness to our thoughts and actions sakshi our pooja gurudev always used to say where there is light darkness cannot be where knowledge has come ignorance must quit so in every hindu household it is customary to light that lamp deepam twice both in the morning and in the evening this is usually done in the prayer room before the deity our daily worship starts with lighting of the lamp in fact all auspicious occasions religious as well as social start with that lighting of the lamp so on this deepavali day i urge all of you let us make that pledge amongst our families let us not blow the candle when we celebrate birthday or any other celebrations for that matter our puja guruji swami tejo mayanand ji used to say i don't know where that tradition came from and he instructed us in the early 90s and we have been following it since we always light a lamp on even on the birthday this custom of lighting the lamp has a very deep intellectual and spiritual significance when we light a lamp we say the shloka deepa jyote param brahma deepa jyote janardana hai deepo haratu me papam sandhya deepo namostute meaning salutations to that light of that lamp deepa jyoti that light of lamp represents param brahma supreme brahman and the light of the lamp represents janardana vishnu deepo haratu me papam let that light in that lamp remove my sins so i i offer my salutations deepo namostute to that light of lamp another popular prayer we teach children is shubham karoti kalyanam aarogyam dhana sampadah shatru buddhi vinashaya deepa jyotir namostute salutations again to that light of the lamp which brings me kalyanam auspiciousness 
ఆరోగ్యం హెల్త్ ధన సంపద ప్రా ప్రాస్పెరిటీ లెట్ దట్ లైట్ ఇన్ దట్ ల్యాంప్ శత్రు బుద్ధి వినాశాయ డిస్ట్రాయ్ ఆల్ ద ఫీలింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ అనిమాసిటీ దీప జ్యోతిర్నమోస్తుతే సాల్యూటేషన్స్ టు దట్ లైట్ ఇన్ దట్ ల్యాంప్ that lamp especially the lamp which we light an oil lamp has a deep spiritual significance that lighted lamp that we are seeing here a uh, puja gurudev used to say that flame is fed on that oil that oil stands for our clear devotion with that intense love of contemplation on that lord and the wick there stands for our intellect striving to cultivate the right values so the spiritual significance of this type of lighted lamp compared to an electric light it can only remove the darkness to light but notice here that the flame is single pointed and pointing upwards for towards our higher ideals you see we live in an era of information social media so the importance of sharing knowledge is illustrated with this example even if we take one single deepam light candle we can light many more lights but the power of the original lamp does not diminish when helping to light others a very important uh, point to note this clearly shows that our knowledge does not decrease when we share it with others now let us explore the deeper meaning of the light and that light consciousness from a vedantic standpoint and let us recite that shanti mantra from the bruhadaranyaka upanishad asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrutyor ma amritam gamaya Om Shanti 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 A prayer A true prayer from a very mature sadhaka and is a very very appropriate mantra for our discussion today here the seeker's admission of a sense of limitation a heartfelt cry 
for assistance to the Guru in transcendence. He is not asking for any mundane things of the transactional world. It is not a prayer for food. It is not a prayer for shelter, health, riches, success, fame, glory, even not for heaven. The one who is reciting these three mantras has realized that such things are impermanent, soaked in pain, even in abundance, will leave us forever wanting for more. Because dissatisfaction is guaranteed. So it is in this full understanding that one turns to this form of prayer. The essence of each of these three mantras is the same. O oh Guru, please help me. Free me from my ignorance. Free me from my misunderstandings regarding myself, the universe, and God himself. Please bless me with that true knowledge of the self. So the first mantra, Asatoma Sadgamaya means lead me from the Asat to the Sat. But only in our India's philosophy of Advaita Vedanta, this concept of truth has been so meticulously and successfully dissected. According to our Advaita Vedanta, for something to be considered sat in the ultimate sense, it must remain unchanged in all three periods of time, the past, the present, and the future. Trikale tishtati iti sat. In fact, Advaita Vedanta goes one step further. It says, if something does not exist in all three periods of time, the past, present, and the future, our waking dream and the deep sleep state, that it does not truly exist. That it is not ultimately, ultimately real. The universe and everything in creation, things are in a constant state of flux. The planets are in constant motion. Their positions are changing and is in continuous flux. The seasons are ever shifting. Scientifically, we can see that our own bodies, the cells within them come into existence and are born and they go through shed vikara, six modifications, periods of growth, sustenance, deterioration, and ultimately leading to death. 
In fact, these modifications are a part and parcel of everything in creation. At an emotional level, we move back and forth between happiness and sorrow. Sukha, Dukkha. At an intellectual level, our intellectual convictions rarely stay fixed for very long. So according to Vedanta, we cannot call this world real. Not ultimately real, but it appears to be apparently real is what our Puja Gurudev used to call it. We cannot say it is non-existent or asat. Vedanta uses the term apparently real or mithya. Sat asat bhyam anirvachyam. Inexplicable phenomena. So what do we do? We use examples of rope and snake, post and ghost. Classic examples to illustrate this theory of illusion. See, triple A is our problem. Advitiya Atma Agnanam, created by Adhyasa, due to which Avidya and our Ahankara is glorified. That notion of individuality or Jiva Bhava, a sense of finitude, a sense of limitedness due to avidya or ignorance considered to be the root cause of our bondage, bandhana. We need to realize that ego is not our amigo. We have to let it go. So in that context, I will take a minute to explain the two classic examples given in Vedanta, which is very appropriate. First is the rope and the snake. I hope you can see the snake there, superimposed on that rope. And we use the example of the post and the ghost. In the rope and the snake example, the traveler is in a twilight zone, semi-dark. What he does, he steps on the rope, mistakes it to be a snake. He is frightened. He is trembling with fear until a wise man comes and what he does? Sheds light on it. Shows that it is only a rope. Remember, this example happens in semi-darkness or a twilight. That light in this example signifies knowledge. And the wise man who sheds that light is the guru that comes in our lives. So the second mantra, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, means lead me from darkness to light. 
That is our topic today. In our scriptures, when it refers to darkness and light, they mean ignorance and knowledge, respectively. This is so because ignorance, like darkness, it obscures our true understanding. And in the same way, the only remedy for darkness is light. And the only remedy for ignorance is knowledge. The knowledge spoken here is again the knowledge of one's true nature, the knowledge of the self, not other, any other university knowledge. Atma Jnana, Brahma Jnana. Currently, in darkness of our ignorance, we believe ourselves to be bound, limited. But the Guru and the scriptures are telling us that in truth, we are not, never will be, and we have never been bound. This bondage that we are feeling is illusory, just like that snake on that rope that was superimposed. Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa said, the cave may be a thousand years old, the pitch darkness inside the cave maybe hundreds, thousands years old, but the moment we strike a match, the moment we turn the flashlight on, the darkness is gone. Same way, at the culmination of such a knowledge, light floods the room, as if it were, the darkness is gone. Our ignorance is gone. Now for the final mantra, Mrityorma Amrutam Gamaya means lead me from death to immortality. Please note that this prayer is not to be taken as a prayer to live endless years in heaven or on earth. It is a prayer to the Guru for assistance in realizing the truth that I was never born, nor can I ever die, as I am not that body, I am not this mind, I am not this intellect, but the eternal blissful consciousness that serves as the substratum for the entire creation. It is important to remember that the leading here is not a physical leading because that Atma is not something far away that we have to make a pilgrimage to, that we, need, that we don't need to go procure to transform ourselves physically. 
that self, Atman, we don't need to travel to get travel to it. We are it. The journey is not a physical journey, but a journey of knowledge. That inner journey. It is a journey from misunderstanding to understanding. What this mantra really means, lead me to the understanding that I am not this limited body, limited mind and intellect, but I am, I was, always will be that eternal nitya pure shuddha blissful consciousness that sat chit ananda swarupa with that let us conclude om sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makas Chidduka Bhagbhave Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrutyorma Amrutam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Bhyonamaha Arihi Om Tatsat May all be happy, may all be healthy, may all see auspiciousness, may none suffer, and may all of us See that light at the end of the tunnel. Hario. Now we'll open it up for Q and A.